You can't build an electric car without batteries, so where are we going to get them from? There is a bunch of good news on this front, which is why we're talking batteries, batteries, batteries today. Or as Elon would say, batteries, batteries, batteries. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's the same thing. Or so I'm told. I've got Herbert from Brighter here to make us precisely that. We're going to talk about this, the new factories, what it all means, output, prices, and you name it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So Herbert, we're just going to jump right in here. For those who don't know, Herbert's got a channel called Brighter with Herbert, where he has fantastic guests on every day of the week. Uh, well, he has shows every day of the week. Fantastic guests. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> only I'm, only on, with you. <laughs> I'm only on twice a week. So it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, he's doing his best is what I'm saying. All right. EV battery manufacturing will rise when 10 plants come online this year in the U.S. alone. That's a big deal. 10 new vehicle battery factories are on track to go online this year in the U.S. alone, including big ones from Panasonic, Samsung, SK Innovations, and automakers such as Ford, Honda, Hyundai, Stellantis, and Toyota. These are uh, a big deal, and we're going to be talking about some of the implications of it. But when it comes to having these factories, why, first of all, I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll start with the softball. Why is it important? Why does it matter? <laughs> There's actually two really big reasons why. Number one is electric vehicle growth, despite what you're hearing, is on a rise, is expected to get up to, you know, by 2030. Looks like that the uh, demand for electric battery vehicles, vehicle uh, battery demand, electric vehicle battery demand, is going to need to quadruple to 4,100 gigawatt hours by 2030. It will require, I'm taking a look here, it says 100 and 120 to 150 new battery factories will need to be built by 2030. So it's great to hear that we got 10 coming online this year, but it's not enough. And the second reason, of course, is the data, the AI data centers. These things take up a lot of energy for kind of like uh, smoothing out the the, uh, the, the electric, electricity. And this is pretty massive as well. So there's a prediction that is 50% rise in data center power demand by 2027. So that combined with electric vehicles, this is not enough. They need to build more. And in fact, what Elon said and Tesla said this year in the last quarter was they're battery constrained. That's the reason why they need to, they need to find ways to build more batteries uh, quicker because they've got not only but the, the, not only do they have, he said, we have to choose between stationary battery and mobile battery. So the cars versus uh, 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 battery packs, mega packs, and then there's the bots and then there's the data centers. So they need to figure this out quick. I would say all of that is true. Um, but worth noting, 10 is only in the U.S. Here's a, a deeper dive on where the factories are going. Arizona. Um, what have we got there? Panasonic in Kansas, Stellantis, a bunch in the in the Rust Belt where a lot of automobiles are made and some in the southeast where a number of factories now are that build automobiles as well. And internationally, though, we are looking at some other things like uh, Tesla themselves building. You know, we, first of all, we've got Giga Nevada, which is a big deal. They are expanding into LFP production. That addresses the stationary storage side of it. But like Elon said, if you're going to be putting them into mega packs, you can't put them into short range cars uh, or standard range, I guess you would call it. But mm. you can't put them into automotive if you're going to be putting them into stationary. And things like mega packs for data centers is going to remain a strong demand driver for some time. Um, on a uh, less exciting note, this is just a little bit of a setback. Lithium battery factory near Spokane damaged in largest fire of its kind. That does not look like a very large battery factory to me. That looks like... That's weird my, factory. It looks like, that looks like my brother's workshop <laughs> is what that looks like. So it don't does. get... Don't get too confused by those. Uh, but we've got China's CALB yeah. to invest yeah. 2 billion in EV battery yeah. factory in Portugal. So around the world, these are coming online. And Portugal, not a big automobile manufacturer, but they are part of the EU. Those batteries can go to any manufacturer within the EU uh, duty-free. Uh, and this would have 15 gigawatt hours of production capacity. Uh, yeah. Enough. So, so yeah. Tesla's announced that their lithium refinery is actually online now, right? They're they're melting them now. And he said, remember a couple of years ago, a few years ago, Elon was on a call and he said, lithium is everywhere, right? It's abundant. It's easy to get that. And if you're a 
if you, he goes, highly recommend if you want a good business, get into lithium, the demand will be so high and you'll make a lot of money. And so that's, I, I'm hoping, you know, more and more of these guys come out and do that. We should also talk about, yeah, you know, what happens with where, where these, you pointed out where these, uh, uh, factories are in the U.S. We can talk about uh, whether or not there might be some administrative change on that. We will get into that with the clean energy funding uh, from the yeah. IRA momentarily. That is a very valuable and important point that we'll need to get to. But uh, when Elon said, get into lithium, he said, also get into nickel. We need more nickel. There are a lot of, we're building, we're building hamburgers here. <laughs> and we can see a looming shortage for tomatoes. Please get into tomatoes. But yeah. if we get all the tomatoes, then the bottleneck just moves to somewhere else. So today it, it may have been lithium at the time or nickel at the time, but who knows what it's going to be right now. It appears to be the factories themselves. The lack of factories is the bottleneck. We've got enough minerals for now. Mm -hmm. um, and I did have someone in the comments say, oh my gosh, I invested in a bunch of lithium companies and the stocks mm -hmm. are doing terribly yeah. because lithium is abundant. It is yeah. everywhere, uh, yeah. but makes it a little tricky. Prices when... have uh, just completely crashed. Yeah. Yes. Which is great well, news for cars and mega packs, but not good if you're trying to make money out of it. I had an opportunity to interview the CEO of First Phosphate out of uh, Canada recently. And mm. he was saying, look, we've, we, the phosphate production is coming online to make LFP batteries, but, uh, the factories aren't there yet. So we need to, we need to come to market at the correct time. Just getting yeah. to market is not enough. All the pieces need to be there when you get there. Mm. So it makes it tricky. Now, this is a link that, uh, you had shared with me about yeah. the clean energy funding. Talk right. me through so this is uh, what the expected right was approved by Congress for the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, and includes, of course, uh, incentives for electric vehicle purchase, and we're all of us are quite aware of that. But it also includes investment credit, fifty billion dollars here for, um, and the clean manufacturing test, test tax credit, thirty billion dollars if you invest and build in clean energy factories and building batteries. And so, you know, the question is whether or not right you've heard. Um, kind of talk that Trump administration will, will, will get rid of any incentive for EVs. So there's two parts, right? There's, they, they may try to get rid of the EV in credit. When you buy an electric vehicle, you may not no longer be able to get the $7,500 credit, but it's very unlikely in my opinion, that they're going to get rid of these investment credit and these manufacturing credit tax credits. Um, the reason is if you go back to that first article, these plants that are being built are almost all of them are in Republican states. And so it just seems if you, there's actually a statement up there that said that. So th that's just the point is that you there are at the very bottom line. They're already built. You can't stop it. The momentum's there. And most of them are in Republican states. It's difficult to stay away when many thousands of jobs promise your key voter base. So whether Trump likes it or not, he's about to preside over a ban year for the U.S. as a major player in EV batteries, and thanks in large part to Joe Biden. So, you know, the idea that that, that would go away is low. Um, Congress would need to vote on it. And in fact, what could actually happen, which is what Jeff Lutz has been saying, um, that makes a lot of sense to me, is that, yes, they might get rid of this just because they say, I don't want the same kind of credits that's been approved by the previous admin. But what they'll replace it with is a Made in America credit. And that makes sense. So if you build factories in America, whether it's car factories, whether it's battery factories, we'll give you the credit for that reason. And I, that, there you go. That would make sense to me too. So, well, I, I would say that, uh, when, it, when we're looking at this, um, I don't think anything is off the table. A lot of norms for what is and isn't acceptable have shifted in the, in this year, in the last few weeks, um, in terms of Congress having to approve things, uh, Congress hasn't approved a lot of things that have happened in the last week. A lot of, uh, appropriations that Congress has allocated have been, uh, terminated, rescinded, or, or altered in such a way as yeah. to effectively uh, happen, remove sure. them. Yeah, um, agreed. And, and I don't know that, I mean, a lot of the, there was a, a contract company in, Oklahoma that is now basically out of business in a district that went heavily for the current administration because mm -hmm. uh, they believe that their jobs would be safe. It would be all the other jobs that were cut. Uh, so I, I am, I am not as convinced that, mm -hmm. that norms and loyalty and, uh, what would necessarily work. I did want to point something out here for the people. We invariably get people saying, why not more nuclear power? 
Look, Elon has said he's in favor of nuclear power. It is very good for base load generation. It's just expensive and slow to build. And look, 30 billion for zero emission nuclear power production credits. The money's there. It's always been there. Nuclear has always gotten its share of the pie. Uh, for 80 years now, nuclear has been subsidized. Um, I'm not saying that we should pull the plug. I'm saying please stop complaining and imagining that the plug was pulled 50 years ago. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, mm -hmm. It's still there. Uh, are we... Are, do you think that the $1,000 EV surcharge um, that has been proposed will come to pass? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Honestly, like that's that's just weird. Feels punitive at a time when the industry is just getting its feet, uh, you know, its, that, it's yeah. footing. I don't know. Like you said earlier, you, I don't know what's going to get passed or not, right? It's just a, well, who knows what's going to happen. But uh, I think it's completely wrong because, again, I keep I've been saying this a few times now. It's so short sighted to real to not realize that it's not a politics in the U.S. scenario. It's a politics in a global stage. You got the Chinese government completely subsidizing hundreds of these electric vehicle companies, batteries. They've they've their their supply chain. They're all for global domination. Um, smart cars is going to take over, and 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 uh, robots. So why are we are delaying our transition to electric vehicles? Because you need the electric vehicles in order to get to the smart car, um, autonomous cars, and so forth. So doesn't make sense but um yes yeah. and i obviously i would agree with all of that uh, but that's you know you and i are uh studying this all the time very thoroughly um it's going to be tricky we're going to see some weird weird bumps in the road coming um there's just an, a, a lot of hostility towards electrification generally. And I had a show recently where I showed a number of the manufacturers who are stepping back from electrification. They've got a reprieve. They're, they're, they've got a stay of execution, as it were, because their business model is fundamentally broken. If they don't wish to electrify in the U.S., they can survive making gas guzzlers. But the U.S. is not the entire world. There is an international market, and those vehicles will not sell internationally after, after 2030, but certainly 2035. But really, already today, we're seeing it. The Conquest brands in in China, the 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 big high cachet brands like Mercedes and Porsche and Audi, have don't have the same kind of power that they did, mm -hmm. and people are not aspiring to those brands. Yeah, that was weird. Is that not only uh, that they sales plummet in China, like plummet off the wall here, not only for the U.S. brands but the German brands as well, uh, but they uh, many of them, almost all of them, partnered with a Chinese supplier, supply a Chinese company to try to create their cars there. And that's still that it's not selling. So even a yes. Chinese made GM car being sold in China, still not selling. The brands have just been, and uh, according to Michael Dunn, who's an expert in the space in both auto and in China, said that the Chinese consumers uh, care more about tech forward uh, technology solutions rather than I've got a, you know, leather seating and it's got extra stitches on it. Right. And that's where right. they are competing with, okay, you know, I've got a fridge in my back, my, my seats swivel, these kinds of new tech that they're adding and smart cars now, right? Which car can actually do these you know, auto park summon. And so, yeah. That's if happening, you, apparently. if you can't see the trend and participate in it, you will fall behind. The 1960s was an interesting time because in the 1960s, everything was fashion. Music was fashion. Uh, architecture was fashion. Uh, furniture was fashion. And if you look at 1960 versus 1970, uh, there are so many radical changes in what fashion was each year. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been seen like it in history before or since. If you were a company that refused to change during that time, you may have gone out of business because everything was changing so quickly and that's happening right now in automotive especially in china if you're not keeping up with what's going on um, you're you're done and these old brands and by old i mean 10 years uh, ago mm -hmm. are seen largely as dinosaurs who on earth would buy a buick in china and i say buick because i've driven in a buick in china it was mm -hmm. a I, they gave it a different name but i think it was the buick regal that was uh 
built in in China at a GM plant. It was the the big, comfortable executive car that they would send to the airport if you were important. Um, and I, I just thought, wow, this this is what counts as luxury, I guess, uh, at the time. And uh, it was I cannot imagine them thinking that way any longer because they would they would send something uh, Chinese, something better and Chinese. Herbert, thank you so much for hanging out and joining the conversation. This is important. Batteries, I guess uh, I do have one big last question, but first I will say, guys, subscribe. Pretty please. It doesn't cost a thing. Like, do all the things you do. You can support me on Patreon or otherwise. It's all in the description. Find that link below. My big question is, all these factories coming online, will it reduce the cost of batteries even more and create an oversupply, or is the demand for batteries insatiable i'm i'm a, on the side that is insatiable and that the battery prices have fallen uh significantly because like you were saying that there's you know the lithium has become plentiful but there's going to be these bottlenecks and the demand is so high that they're gonna they're gonna run out again that's gonna flip back to we need you to build more tesla's in battery constraint right now they're trying to do growth they need more right now so i, I guess i agree yeah. Yeah. I would Even like to EVs, say, yeah. EV sales have fallen, absolutely, it's not, or it's not as high as some have thought. Don't forget that AI data centers have come in with a massive force, with m higher needs, and that's kind of like the one-two punch here that, um, you know, EVs will go back up again. Right? We're in just that weird lull. Yes, and I would agree with all of that. I would have liked to say, when I started the research for this video, I my conclusion was this will definitely make battery prices come down. But the more I got into it, the more I realized it's probably not. The demand is insatiable um, because it is a global market and oversupply in one country uh, can result in the product just being exported. Uh, mm -hmm. or built into something different. Guys, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it in the comments, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.